distinguished colleagues, the Honorable Minister of uh, Niger Delta Affairs, our own in the Senate here, the former minority leader in the Eighth Assembly representing the opposition, but later, don't post for the ruling party today, the Minister of uh, Niger Delta Affairs, the Swing Senator Akpabio. You are welcome, sir. You know, we know the language of the Red Chamber. We are one forever and ever. Last week, I said our own to respect our own. This is the institution you belong to. Anytime, any day, we know you will respect us. I know there is a break in communication. That's why I made so much noise. I say our own cannot desert us here. It should come and answer this query on behalf of his ministry. And today we are privileged to announce to you that distinguished Senator Akpabio is here to join his people here to tell the owner here that uh, he is a man of integrity that we never, that we never, that we never disregard the history of the Senate of which he is a member. Thank you, sir. Sit down. For the better of those who are at home, I will read this note of this petition. Akampo DN. Anion, on behalf of nine land consultant and register severe funds against Federal Ministry of Niger Delta Affairs. The petition was laid by Senator Gershom H. Bassi, Cross River South, on Wednesday, 16 February 2022. Akan Podien Anion wrote, on behalf of nine land consultant and register severe firm against the Federal Ministry of Niger Data Affairs for non-payment of their fees for the survey of new town development projects in the nine states of the Niger Data region. He requested that the Senate should look into the matter and all Federal Ministry of Data, Niger Data Affairs to pay them their professional fees for the job successfully executed. On 30th March 2022, a campo DN and Ion appeared before the committee and made presentation. The Minister of Niger Data Affairs failed to appear. The committee directed that the Minister and Permanent Secretary of the Federal Ministry of Niger Affairs are to appear before the committee on 12 April 2022. And if they fail to do so, the committee will be forced to take harder lines of action. They are all invited to appear today. Uh, that's why I first of all appreciate the former minority leader in this red chamber, the single senator Akpabio, who is today the Minister of Niger Data Affairs, you will recall that I made it about the other day that uh, there may be break in communication. Maybe the letter written by the committee was still in the locker of the permanent secretary or his confidential secretary. And I made it blow to say that uh, there is no way Akpabio will hear the review of the Senate when he has no skeleton in his cupboard, he was not in the ministry when his uh, contract was awarded. But today, government is continuing. He's the number one citizen of that particular ministry, representing the mandate of Nigeria and that of President Muhammad Buhari. And I said that call was an invitation in case the one read it again, they will not allow to read the office of the minister. And I am proud. To say that today, he is on seat to answer the Senate of which he is a member. Thank you, the Swiss Senator Akwabio. And um, we give you, we give the, uh, the, uh, the petitioners only three minutes. Because we've read all through, and a copy has also been sent to the ministry. And I believe the, we, I mean, the number one citizen in the ministry and the minister will be able to respond briefly to the owner here to clear what the EU is all about. So please, sir, only three minutes, because time is our principal budget uh, factor. Thank you. Uh, my name is Odudu Abasi Itwen, uh, representing the surveyors. Uh, the crux of the issue, distinguished senators, is that the surveyors here were appointed by the ministry, and they carried out surveys in nine states of the Niger Delta. Distinguished senators, the jobs done by the surveyors 
were paramount to the project, to the implementation and execution and completion of the project at hand. In some states, some of these surveyors made two surveys. And so far, distinguished senators, they have not been paid. That is the crux of the issue before the Senate. And on several occasions, we have, the surveyors have written to the ministry to please pay what is being owed them. Thank you. That's all. That's simple. Pleasure. Well, we'll give the... And my dear brother, Senator Patrick Akin Jerura, and other very distinguished members of the committee, including the landlord of the Senate, Senator General Manager. <laughs> I saw <laughs> my brother, Senator Opayami, and then, of course, my brother, Senator Getsch, lastly. The petitioners, very distinguished staff, the permanent secretary of the Ministry of Niger Delta Affairs, the directors, ladies and gentlemen, and gentlemen of the press. First, let me commend the distinguished chairman for the wisdom of this committee in the previous proceedings. And I, I had the privilege of sitting down to listen to. I believe that the wisdom comes from God. And may this wisdom continue to guide this committee and the entire Senate. Amen. The, 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 some of the issues you are dealing with are slightly emotional, and they deal with humanity. Some of the people that you have to intervene, it goes beyond them. It affects their wives, their children, their communities, their careers and affects national security. Because if we don't take time, and we churn out very intelligent and well-trained people carrying arms, and then we throw them away just like rats, they may be forced to join banditry, and that will affect national security. So I want to thank this committee for the various interventions I've witnessed here today. I've been here for hours, and I can tell you that I quite enjoyed myself. Let me apologize to the chairman and the members of this committee that I wasn't aware, like you pointed out, of any invitation. In fact, just here now, I've just been informed by the director in charge of uh, housing. housing that the invitation, the first invitation that came to the ministry came a week after the sitting, after the death, the death in question. So it was good that you shouted out and the press carried it. So I was watching television when I saw where you said he must be here. Why would they be here? This is like my second home. Forever I'll be called a senator. And sometimes people have forgotten I was a governor. When I go abroad and I introduce myself, if you say governor this, they will say take to the left. But if it's distinguished senator, probably they say go straight and go. <laughs> they just tap your passport. So what they know out there and what they respect is being a senator, and I'm very proud to be one. And my colleagues who are governors and those who have not yet aspired to be senators, I urge you to do so. It's a good name to bear. <laughs> so, so that is why I couldn't have ignored any invitation from this committee or any committee of the National Assembly for that matter, because I'm part and parcel of this forever. So I thank you and I do apologize. So nevertheless, we have received this petition and uh, unfortunately, we don't have a copy of the petition that the petitioners brought here. None was sent to us, so we don't have. But we are, well, we are, we are states of the matter. And we're very privileged to answer any question in relation there to. The summary of my submission before the Distinguished Committee is that sometime in 2010, am I right? Yeah. I think sometime in 2010, there was a proposal by the Federal Minister of Niger Delta Affairs 
to go into na new town development in the Niger Delta region. And so some contractors, by way of uh, uh, surveyors, consulting surveyors, were engaged by the ministry to undertake surveys of various areas that would be suitable for the development of new towns in the Niger Delta region. In fact, at that time, the idea was to go through the nine states of the Niger Delta region in 2010. And then I think most of them undertook the jobs. And I think also the ministry also settled their obligation. But the particular complainant before you is not known to the ministry. The name of the complainant was submitted as one of the Survey, sub, surveyors engaged by the main uh, consultant. The name of that consultant is, I think, Plantine. Plantine will give you copies of the engagement letter. Plantine, Nigeria Limited, also. So they submitted some of the, uh, the names of the surveyors of the complainant as those going to do the job. So I would think that probably they submitted the jobs to them. So this has gone very far. So Planta in Nigeria Limited was engaged in September 2010. And then, of course, from the list of the surveying firms, we are not aware that there was any time that the ministry engaged the particular complaint. And what's the name? Alcom Services. Services. And the letters were written to various state governments in the Niger Delta. And then Plantain was supposed to survey a suitable site for the ministry in the Cross River State. And I understand they surveyed two sites, and one side was not suitable, but one side was suitable. And the ministry took it. And the ministry considered uh, a letter written by the complainant from Paul Irokoro and, 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 uh, and Co., their solicitors. And the case went on and on and on. And the ministry kept concluding that you are not known to us. There is no letter of engagement. There is no contract before us. So how do we start? There is no nexus between you and us. So the, I, I think out of frustration, the complainant reported the matter to uh, ICPC, Independent Corrupt Practices uh, Commission, who also stepped into the matter in 2016. And some of the directors of the ministry were, of course, invited, not arrested, but invited. They went there, and they made submissions, both in writing and otherwise. And after over a year's investigation, the I ICPC absolved the ministry and said they had no nexus between the complainant and the issues at hand. And that, uh, at best, they probably were subcontractors to Plantain Blantyne uh, Nigeria Limited, whose responsibility it was or ought to be to settle their subcontractors, not not the ministry settling subcontractors on behalf of the engaged uh, uh, consultant. I think that is the gravity name of the case. Anything outside that has been continuous uh, petitions, resolutions, petitions, resolutions. But like you said, we must look at it from a human perspective, that where we are, we are talking about human beings who probably offer services. I'm very glad if the blunt time services were to be here, because they cannot just engage very uh, uh, family members like this with responsibilities to do jobs, and at the end, they leave them hanging from 2010 until today for 12 years. So Mr. Chairman, I'm here out of respect and love for a very distinguished Senate and your committee, and I'm very proud of what you are doing. At any time you call on me, I'll always be here. That is the summary of my submission. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. they are very dangerous people. I made it clear and said they are the most difficult people in the whole Nigeria. Because when they know they move before, they, they will not allow the minister to have the paper because they, this is a second constituency. You can see now he was not even informed, if not because I used this uh, medium to invite him. Now today he has been here for the past one hour. That's out of the respect he has for this institution. 
Hebu mbedi clear to dio na gear da if you are able to total to to three time governor which is not possible na gear constitution it was an uncommon governor of uh, a quite one state uncommon uncommon transformation but whenever he gets on the bed, you see, if he says he's a former governor, they don't respect him. But the single senator, oh, yeah, go. That is the respect for the institution of the Senate. He has made clarifications. If these people are subcontractors and they are not known to the ministry, there is no way the ministry can pay them. We will say give them time to respond. However, but the main consultant, who has contact with the ministry? Has he been paid? If the answer is no, which means that man cannot perform magic to pay his subcontractors. And if the man has been paid, when was he paid? How much was he paid? The ministry will be able to give us this information. So if the man is still alive, we will now bring him to before the Senate to come and tell us, Oga. Okay? You got this contract as the main contractor known to the ministry. And on this day, one, two, three, four, you have been paid. Why didn't you pay your subcontractors? This we'll be able to ask. So what we give uh, two minutes to this uh, to the petitioners. Because if the main contractor have been paid, if we have no God to come to the Senate that he has not been paid. But if actually you are subcontractors, because it say, it means that if they don't know you, no contract was directly awarded to you. So what the question I want to ask me, are you a subcontractor? Or you have direct contract with the ministry? If yes, we want to have a copy of those contracts documents that you have directly with the ministry. But if no, where do you derive your source of subcontracting to go and uh, perform these uh, services? Like I said, we are not court of law, but we are court of the old Nigeria. We will deal with documents here. So if you have a document to show that the ministry gave you a job, then let us have it. So you have the floor, only two minutes to respond. Come survey services that handle cross the first stage. There were nine surveyors, survey firms, and to start with, sir, the ministry wrote to the Minister of Lands and Housing that we're going to do the survey of the Niger Delta region. They wrote to the states requesting for 200 to 250 hectares of land for that project. They also wrote to the Office of the Survey General of the Federation submitting the list of the survey companies that would participate to service. Now, along the line, the ministry on its own went ahead and appointed land, uh, land consultants for each of those nine states. The land consultants are not surveyors. Some of them are lawyers. Land consultants. They are not surveyors, sir. So how can they do the service? Now, the ministry also appointed a, a consulting in, uh, surveyor to handle these things. The ministry had discussions with them, agreed on the way to pay the fees. They supervise us. If you are doing a survey for federal government, you cannot bury any picking on the ground without this office of survey general knowing they give you issue survey, uh, survey numbers. They supervise the job. When you are through, you submit the survey plan to them. They issue completion certificates. And thereafter, you are paid. In this instance, sir, the, con the ministry notified Office of Survey General, notified the Ministry of Lands and, so uh, Ministry of Lands and Housing, so, that's what the conducts are. They did all of those in, and in any case, sir, these land consultants were paid 5% of compensation. How do you pay compensation? The survey was done. They, 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 found, they, they find the boundaries. Minister of Federal Minister of Lands 
produce the compensation. And the ministry paid the land consultants 5% of that. So land surveyors are not paid based on percentage. We have an approved scale of fees, which the coordinating consultant of the ministry. By the way, sir, the ministry doesn't have surveyors. It's the, this man that organized 700 and something surveyors applied for the job, 25 were approved. And when the ministry wrote to the land consultant, they attached the list of the surveyors to use. They attached the list of surveyors to use. That's what they did. And we submitted all the products are with them. All the products are with the ministry. And it was on the basis of that that they paid the land consultants. What did they do? Nothing. Because already the ministry had written to all the state governors to allocate land between 200 and 250, and they did. What was the, what was the use of the land, land consultants? They didn't have any role to play. And in any case, they wrote there two weeks, sir, you cannot have been a surveyor. I got my license, not registration. When I passed the exam, only five people passed in the country. My father was president of Nigerian National Surveyors. His license number is 156. Me, his son. What is the basis of claim? I'm, I'm saying that, sir, let me just answer. I'm saying that between my dad and I. If you wouldn't mind, because what's on between you and the ministry, forget about whether uh, granddaddy was, uh, uh, please. We want to know, we want to assist you. That is why we have invited them. The, 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 what is the umbilical call? Do you have any agreement to, for you to speak before us that you have, you have, you have, this ministry has contractual obligation with you? These are some of the things that you need to establish. Please, if you wouldn't mind. Yes. From the ministry straight to each surveyor. But however, there was a coordinating surveyor who was in constant communication, who was the bridge between these surveyors and the ministry, and even the office of the surveyor general. The ministry would argue that, oh, there is no contract. Distinguished senators, contracts are established in different ways. One of them is by conduct. Now, by the conduct of the ministry, in writing to the office of the surveyor general, in writing to different governors of states, a lot contracts was established. And would the ministry say that the surveyors did not do the job? No. Will they say that the Office of the Surveyor General did not acknowledge the job? No. Will they also say that delegates were not sent from each state's ministries to, sub, to check out these jobs? No. In any case, the coordinating, if they argue that there was no contract with the surveyors, the coordinating consultant, who they have a contract with, has not been paid. Distinguished senators, that brings up the issue of good faith. If you have, if you are arguing that, hold on, hold on, the coordinating surveyor. Uh, yes. Does he have an agreement with? with the he does. He does. What is the contract? Uh, distribution of um, we um, copies copies of. Let's proceed this way. Mention the name of a consulting company. You heard that? Yes. Now, is that company one of the petitioners? There are five petitioners before us. Is that company one of the petitioners? No. Okay, okay, wait. So the five petitioners before the committee, are they linked to that main consulting firm mentioned by the Honorable Minister? Yes. The only, the only surveying firm linked to that consulting company is Mr. Akampo. Okay. That's the only one. Okay. As yes. a coordinating consultant, is that it? No, he is the coordinating consultant. Okay. Okay. Are so, you were you linked you? with the... Ministry? Yes, he was. Yes. Okay. You have a contract with the ministry? Yes. Where is contract with Everything is in the... Is it part of what you submitted? Yeah, it's part of what you submitted. Okay. We have uh, got that one clear now. You have a direct contract with the ministry. 
I have tried. They have written that they are not owing me. Sorry, sir. You have a contract with the ministry? Yes. And you have submitted your claim? Yes. And up to today, they have not paid you? For over 10 years, they have not paid you. Don't worry. Now, the ministry now, are you aware that this man has a contract with you? Mr. Chairman, sir, the petitioner brought us here, not the uh, coordinating consultant. The coordinating consultant will have to come before the, this distinguished committee if he has a case in the ministry. But today we came because of the petitioner. I got my mind right. Uh, so the, the reality is that from the records I've seen before coming here, the ministry appointed nine consultants and wrote to all the state governments that there was a plan to undertake new town development to make available between 200 to 250 hectares, he hectares of land. And uh, hectares. Yes. He hectares. 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 Am I correct? Yes. yes. Very good. So, so then the ministry went ahead to follow due process and appointed nine consultants to undertake the survey. So if you give me a job and I bring five or seven workers, those workers are your workers. Yeah. They cannot now come and, and bypass you and come down to say, bring me money. So the, the director here who was there in 2010, and, uh, and he's currently the director of housing. Uh, he, was, he has been a staff of that department and he knows everything. I want us to assist the petitioner uh, because, of course, we are a government that believes in redress and where there is need, where injustice is seen, it should be addressed, but not uh, stories because the, before a contract with the ministry is established, we have to follow the law passed by the National Assembly. You have to go to Bureau of Public Procurement. In some instances, depending on the amount, you have to go to the Federal Executive Council. And there are some that are within the Ministerial Tenders Board. And then there will be offer and acceptance. And offer and acceptance means if an amount will be fixed for you, and then it will be, a letter will be given to you. Even when the letter is given to you, there is no contract. Until you write, yes, until you write and accept. And the moment you write and accept, the legal department will now invite you, and then there will be agreement signed between the ministry and, uh, and, and you. He doesn't have any of those things. Like I said, this has lingered for 12 years. He has gone through the courts. He has gone through various agencies. He has gone through ICPC. And the ICPC did not find the ministry wanting. And now he's before you. We are, he has even gone to the office of chief of staff. Committees have been set up, and they still found out that the ministry has no legs to between him and, uh, and, uh, and the ministry. So for me, I will not say, my mother used to teach me that she would never pray that people, uh, that heaven should be empty. At the same time, as much as she wishes that people should not die, she would never say that empty sh heaven should be empty. Because God has created heaven and earth. So if you keep praying that people should not die, then you want her to be empty. And you want heaven to be empty. I, 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 would like, I would like to do justice to the petitioner. But I, I, we, are, we are dealing with records. We are dealing with records. I cannot, uh, on the basis of what he said, 12 years ago, begin to form a contract in my head and then write to the president of the Federal Executive Council and said there was a man that was employed by a company called Blantyne Services and that man was, the other one was land consultant, the other one was consult, uh, was surveyor. The man that was most qualified with his father and grandfather actually belonged to this other group. The man was was paid was the other group. The ministry met its obligations and paid the nine consultants that were, that went through due process where, uh, and they were duly contracted and then the, the obligations were settled. So what has happened for the past 12 years is something that is misled. He actually ought to be suing Lantine uh, 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 Services Limited for, for uh, maybe engaging them for, and then not paying them. 
results, it will be like a breach of subcontract. Thank you, sir. Let the director just put the reason light on it. Yes, please. Somebody said, no, sir, 20 years. And they may not be struggling to move from one place to another. Only, only. You are a man with a big ass. Yes. You are a man Housing and skill acquisition centers. And at that time, the ministry engaged a consultant to superintend and help it with land acquisition. That contractor, that consultant had a contract. Yes. The first contract did not have a price. Neither did it have a definite definition of assignment. An addendum to that contract, which was done after the expiration of the first contract, then inserted 5% as fee for land survey and 5% as fee for land acquisition to that consultant. But in those two in, in that regime, the ministry was only doing those two projects called skill acquisition centers and the housing projects. In the later years, the ministry then batted the idea of new towns. And when the ministry came to that, in the wisdom of the ministry, the ministry appointed nine individual consultants to play the role of consultant and advise it and help it to acquire land in each of those states. <coughs> Am I clear, sir? Good. It is those land consultants that were the ones who engaged the surveyors to do the perimeter surveys and the topo surveys for so those actions. Yes. So Blantyre was the one giving Cross River and Ecom services was the surveyor used, that, that Blantyre used. There is a letter where Blantyre appointed Ecom to work for it. In the process, it, yes, one per state. When they were doing the housing and sack, they only had one consultant that was doing, you know, advising the ministry for all the nine. But in their wisdom, when they got to Newtown, they decided to appoint one per state. And it is nine. making nine. And it is each of it. So is, have been they have been paid 5% of the acquisition value that was approved oh, by the Ministry of Work. And the, yes, mm, 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 let, me, let me make that clear. Sir. The ministry, the 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 5% that I said was added in the addendum to the, land, the initial land consultant is still there. It's not the subject matter here. The 5% five, the five that was agreed in the contract to be paid to this land consultant have been paid. That's why the fact that the land acquisition cost itself, not a dime has been paid. But all the nine have received their payment. When you were stating your position, yes. you said ab initio, 5% was approved for survey? In, in, the, con in the contract to Obole and Associates only. 5% for survey, 5% for land acquisition. Mm -hmm. Now, this 5% survey, has it been paid? Cannot, yeah. 
I'm making a clarification. The contract to those nine consultants specifically stated that their fee is nine percent of no five percent of uh, is five percent of the land compensation. Land, land compensation total. So how it is okay, for me is that now, they were to these people now. Yeah. Where do they yeah. all come in? Are they sub are they sub consultant to the land aku yes. acusitors? Yes. Clearly. I think what is important is for us to have these nine consultants and define the relationship of the role these people played. Whether they are the one to pay them directly or not. Then the first one you have appointed, 5% for survey, 5% to land acquisition. Has he been paid? I will if the minister has not paid, let us identify who that person is. I know let we me, have obligation I, to pay this civil. Let me make a clarification there. Yeah. Messrs. Oboya and Associates had a first contract which had no fee and assignment defined. Had no fee. The fee in that contract was not part of the contract. It had no cost. <laughs> I'm, I'm being factual. The records are there. The second, the, 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 he was open. The, the, the second contract, then maybe as an afterthought to, to the error in the first one, now in, inserted 5% for land administration and 5% for survey fees. All of the survey fees have been paid. What about the land acquisition? Land acquisition is in dispute because the assignment, as I speak with you, has been abandoned. All the lands acquired, none has been consummated with the letters of exchange with the states. And the ministry's position is that Mr. Soboli, who is the consultant, had the responsibility to take it from conception from the inception to conception. And until the letters of exchange by the state are issued, his assignment has not been concluded. But they have not okay, come back. What are saying the effect is now? The land consultant yes. has not been paid because there is an issue. Have you? Yes. Are your own services related to that land consultant? No. Now let me make no, a, let yes. me make a further clarification on that. Because if, if your own, uh, if your own uh, services is linked with the land acquisition, Hello. it there follows, wait, sir, it there follows that uh, the man who is to, to pay you has not even been paid by the ministry. Is that what you are saying? No, sir. The, the ministry has made it clear to Mr. Sopoli that because the ministry engaged nine individual consultants for Newtown, Newtown was never part of his assignment. Uh, uh, chairman, so that the director will not confuse all of us. I, I think we are talking about two different contracts here. Whatever, when the ministry was created in 2010, they had a lot of lofty plans. I think in the east, they, they engaged the services of uh, Mr. Anzopoli to uh, obtain lands state by state for them. And then, but that is what he's saying now, that those things were not consummated. In fact, the plan for Newtown was even abandoned. But the engagement of nine consultants, state by state, to go ahead and survey certain plots of land for either city acquisition or housing is what we are discussing now. And I think that is where Mr. Mr. Blantyne services came in. And, and, and yes, and those were the people that were employed to undertake the survey in a Cross River State. And they, were, and, they were, and they were duly paid. Uh, for, uh, for, uh, uh, who, who is for Newtown? Uh, Ekom and Blantyre. Ekom and Blantyre. So, but who was paid? Blantyre and all the other eight consultants were paid. have been paid for their services to the ministry uh -huh. of the so, But listen, listen. So, Mr. Chairman, Blantyre and the other eight haven't been paid. This, of course, this is like 12 years ago. The problem of uh, ECOM is that Blantyne engaged them as part of, their, of the team that handled their own jobs in Cross River State. And they are saying that Blantyne did not pay them, even though 
to the military paid them. So they've gone through all these routes, from uh, the lawyers of Paul Irokoro and co, uh, to the chief of staff, to the president, uh, to SGM, and eventually to ITPC. And uh, from ITPC, now we are here. I, I, but I think they should actually have dragged Blantyne to, to court for contractual obligations not settled. Because actually, there is no nexus from the review, before I came to this uh, distinguished panel, I wanted to see the nexus between them and the ministry, because we have procedures in government. Uh, so if there was a nexus, I would just come to you and I would tell you, oh, we will make available the money in the next budget, which eventually will still come to you for consideration. But he, they, he has to do a lot of work to establish the nexus. They, they, you will see schedule of, uh, I've seen schedule of, uh, 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 surveyors who are going to do jobs for the uh, men, men and uh, nine consultants. And I've seen uh, ECOM in the schedule of uh, uh, those activities, but that is submitted by plan time. And they also submitted other people. So it's really, it, uh, submitted other companies. So it's not really the job of that plan time that was paid their green fee. And they are not here before you, they won't be before you because they have been paid and settled. So, yes. Okay, yeah. yes. The person you are linked with, Mike, I can say. The, pay, I mean, the contractor you are linked with, we have to identify it. Well, if that person has been paid, we need to bring the person, uh, the, that company here, to tell why I have not paid the people that use his services to achieve what made you, you know, get paid by the ministry. So you need to clarify this thing for us so that the minister will know what to do to assist you. Because if we are modeling things together like this, you will have no will. If we, we ask for the report of ICPC now, and there's no definition of the person that gave you the job, if we have most clearly defined the person who gave you the job, and the basis for which you are to be paid by him. Are you, Oga, I mean, you understand what I'm saying now? Yes. So you can hear from the minister now, who is this lantern? What is your relation to that lantern? Well, yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Um, before coming here, we had deliberated on all these issues, and then we came to the conclusion that we would not make our boats sail by sinking another ship. Now, we, we do not leave well to go into the award of the contract by the ministry to Blanta and the other nine consultants. That would be an issue for another day. Now, the, country, the ministry itself had on several occasions written to even the lead, con the land consultants and the office of Secretary General. And let me just quote. Who is the lead consultant? The, 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 lead, the different lead consultants, they um, engaged the land consultants yeah. and even to um, the coordinating consultants and yes yes it does and let's let us read from it says um, forwarding here with is a list of lead and participating surveyors for the new town development project they were selected after due consideration by the ministerial tenders board the surveyors are to be engaged in various states as indicated you want to the office of the Soviet General State. Sorry, sorry. That was addressed to one of one of the land consultants which they engaged. So showing, the showing that they were the ones who also appointed these um, surveyors. Oh, hold on, hold on. Sir. Let me also read this. It says, to this effect, the ministry has engaged a number of surveyors through regular ministerial due process to carry out survey activities on the proposed site. How many of those consultants? How many of them? The, the nine, uh, the nine, uh, nine consultants. Uh -huh. The nine survey consultants. Uh -huh. okay. Yes, and and even when 